Hi everyone, continue with reinforcement learning after critique. Now we have a small video briefly explaining three different types of after critique. I think the most common ones. So let's see again here the structure of the actor and critique, the two deep neural networks and the buffer, replay buffer, the action, the environment, and the reward. Here we have here the the Q value function. So for the first one, we had the proximal policy optimization. It's an advanced actor critique algorithm that seeks to maintain a balance between exploration and exploitation while ensuring stable updates to the policy. PPO uses a surrogate object function to clip the policy update which prevents the new policy from deviating too far from the old one. Uh, then we have the key features, right? One of the main ones is the clipped objective. So the idea is to limit the change in the policy probability ratio to prevent large destabilizing update. It's easier to implement compared to the trust region policy optimization as it is an on a policy, so using the trajectories co collected from the current policy to update the policy. Useful X scenarios. So, what is this one useful for? This looks like useful in the sense of like if we have a stable environment, we could use it, but then if we haven't, so what we can do, right? So, if the, the environment is relatively stable and policy updates are effective is high, dimen the high dimensional action space so it works well with high dimensional action space and complex ta task but still it has to be in a stable environment it's used for game play playing popular in solving continuous control tasks and game playing environments like those found in open air gym and atari game so now if we go here to the equation to see the PPO modifies the policy gradient at day by using a clipped objective function to ensure stable at date. So here we can see the clipped here. So the policy from the old one. Then we have here hyperparameter to control the range of the clipping. So how far we want the clipping. Uh, we had the advance, so this advance is from from the previous uh, reinforcement learning idea. So now we move to deep deterministic policy gradient (DDPG). It's an actor critique algorithm designed for continuous action space, action space. So now we have here the continuous action space. So this is really important sometimes when we have a variable or action that has to move a for certain range and it is not possible to do a discrete value because then we will have thousands of actions right so it's useful for this it combines the deterministic policy gradient with the deep q learning using two neural network the actor to propose actions the critique to evaluate it right so key features it uses a deterministic policy for action selection, which can be more efficient in continuous action space. It's off policy, so it uses the experience replay and target network, which improve sample efficiency and st stabilize training. Continuous control, particularly suited for environments with continuous action space. Useful scenarios for robotics is effective for robotics control than there were a lot of actions that are continuous because we don't want, for example, if the robot had to move the motor from left to right, we had to be more accurate. So we can not just have this, this discrete value so the motor will move to position one, two, three, but we can move for the whole, let's say we're talking about a circle, for the whole circle, right? Circumference. Then we have simulator environments. Is useful in simulation requiring precise control like robotics, arm, or self-driving cars, complex dynamics, 
handle environments with complex high dimensionality dynamic. So here we have the equation for the policy for continuous action space. We had D that it means uh, the estimate from the replay buffer as we mentioned is taking experience and is off policy. So we take experience from the replay buffer. A Q parameter for the critique, this is critique, and this is for the actor. Then we have the soft actor critique. It's also off policy as the previous one, actor critique. It aims to maximize also again to for the first one was about exploration, right? And now here we have about expected reward uh, entropy. The entropy turns encourages exploration by penalty certainty, leading to more diverse actions. So we try to explore using the entropy. The key features is entropy regulation. So it encourages the agent to explore more by adding an entropy term to the reward, promoting a stochastic policy. Of policy, use your replay buffer for sample efficiency stability and performance. Demonstrate good stability and performance in various tasks. Useful scenarios, so exploration heavy tasks, environments where the exploration is crucial, and more stochastic policy is beneficial. Continuous control, excellent for continuous control tasks, similar to those targeted by DDPG. It is useful for complex environments, performs well with dynamics and balance between exploration and exploitation is needed. So here is the equation. We see the entropy. Alpha is the entropy coefficient for our policy that encourage more exploration. So if we make a summary, PPO is best for stable environments and high dimensionality action space particularly useful in game playing and scenarios with stable add days are crucial. DDPG is suitable for continuous action spaces, particularly effective in robotics and simulated environments requiring precise control. SAC is useful for exploration, heavy tasks and complex environment, balancing exploration and exploitation effectively through entropy regulation. If these algorithms offer unique advantages and is suited for different types of tasks and environments, making them powerful tools in the reinforcement learning toolkit. So you need to know more or less uh, the environment you are you are tackling, the environment you want to work on, to decide which one of them you could use. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video. Subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.